Hi, and welcome to my spring 2022 update. I do a general update each season, and this is my spring update. If you want to check out my last three updates, those are episodes 136, 122, and 108. Links to all three of those are in the show notes. In this episode, I will talk about five different things. Number one, my summer vacation. Number two, my business, The Pharmacist's Voice, LLC. Number three, what's coming up on the Pharmacist's Voice podcast. Number four, news about my personal life, husband, kids, etc. And then I'll end up with some updates on what I'm listening to, what I'm reading, what I'm watching, and what I'm playing. If you're new to the Pharmacist's Voice podcast, welcome. My name is Kim Newlove, and I'm the host. I'm a pharmacist by training, but I made a career transition to voice actor and podcast host. Among other things, I narrate audiobooks for women pharmacist authors, provide medical narration to clients in the pharmaceutical and biotech industries, and narrate content for explainer videos and e-learning projects. I was inspired by my nonverbal son who has autism to combine my background as a pharmacist with my speaking voice and launch my business, The Pharmacist's Voice, in 2017. My son, Craig, helped me realize the power of having a voice and using it. My solo podcast episodes are about some aspect of being a pharmacist, a voice actor, a pharmacist podcaster, or my career transition from pharmacist to voice actor and podcast host. My interview shows feature a variety of people who use their voices to advocate for something, educate in some way, or entertain so that you are inspired to use your voice too. This is episode 153, and you can find the show notes with links to most of what's mentioned today on my website, thepharmacistvoice.com. Just click on the podcast tab and search for episode 153. Let's start with summer vacation first. As I record this, it is May 25th, 2022. It may seem a little early for summer vacation for some people. But my kids' last day of school is tomorrow, which is Thursday, May 26th, 2022. And what I'm going to do is schedule this episode to publish on Tuesday, May 31st, 2022. If everything goes according to plan, I should physically be on an island in Lake Huron called Mackinac Island. Greetings from the island, Mon. (laughs) I don't do Jamaican accents well, but that was my try. (laughs) Well, actually, it's not that kind of an island anyways. It's not a Caribbean island. I'm on, I'm going to be on Mackinac Island. It's at the tip of the glove of Michigan. Now, if you're not familiar with Michigan geography, everybody uses their hand and the top of their middle finger or the longest finger is the the tip of the glove, as they call it. So basically, I'm going to be in the northernmost tip of the lower peninsula of Michigan. This isn't exactly a summery vacation, I realize, but I've always wanted to take my kids to Mackinac Island, so Mackinac Island is where we are as we say goodbye to the month of May. On this trip, we're also going to visit some other stuff, not just Mackinac Island. We're going to check out the sand dunes in Michigan. Sand dunes in Michigan, what? Yeah, I know, it seems unusual. If you're not familiar with Michigan, yes, there are sand dunes. There are two sets of them that we're going to visit. Don't know if there's any others, other than the beaches, I guess. But one of the sets of sand dunes we're going to check out are the Silver Lake sand dunes. Those are on the west side of Michigan. And the other ones are the Sleeping Bear Sand Dunes that are in Traverse City, Michigan. We're bringing our bikes on this trip, and we plan to spend lots of time outside, weather permitting, of course, and spending lots of time together as a family. Now, if you don't know me very well, let me just tell you that my husband and I have two sons. We've been married more than 20 years. We have Craig, who's 19 and has autism. He's starting summer school on June 13th, and we also have Derek. He is 17. He starts cross-country conditioning on Monday, June 6th. It's a good time to get away right now before the family gets busy with their summer activities, and we'll talk more about family just a little bit later. Next, I'd like to give you just a 
brief update on my business, The Pharmacist Voice, LLC. If you know me very well, (laughs) you know that deep dives are my thing, but I'm going to keep this short because it's Wednesday, I need to pack, and I'm leaving Friday morning. Ah, (laughs) here goes. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to follow this pattern. What have I done? What am I doing now? What's next? And what's in my way? That's how I'm going to go through what's going on with my business. Here we go. Let's start with what have I done? For starters, I got my taxes done. Whoop, whoop. Glad that's out of the way. And it was relatively painless. I got to say, as an entrepreneur, I have an accountant. I did not get an accountant until I became an entrepreneur. I highly recommend finding a good accountant and building a relationship with him or her when and if you become an entrepreneur. Mine happens to be a woman, and she does a fantastic job. My most recent audiobook project went retail. All right, that's my next thing I'm going to talk about. I narrated Perimenopause, The Savvy Sister's Guide to Hormone Harmony. It was written by Dr. Anna Garrett and published by Legacies Publishing, Inc. Thank you, Dr. Anna, for selecting me as your narrator. And Leanne, her publisher, was fantastic to work with. So great team there. And also, I got to give a shout out to Julie Walthers. She was my editor, my audio engineer, actually. Um, And what she does is she takes all of my raw audio and she adds in all the spaces and Make sure that it meets all the specifications that ACX or Audible or Amazon, however you want to say it, require in order to go public. So thank you to my team, Dr. Anna, Leanne, and Julie. Thank you for all you did. We're published. I'm excited. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Next, I want to talk about something else that I did this spring. I went to the annual conference of the Ohio Pharmacists Association. That was in April. I actually did an entire episode recapping my experience. That was episode 143, and there's a link to it in the show notes. Now, they did offer me some additional online CE included with my conference registration, registration, can't talk today, sorry, and I need to complete that by June 8th. I don't know if I'll get it done because I'm going on vacation, but I do have that opportunity. There's a link again to episode 143 in the show notes, and wish me luck. I hope I get that CE done. Also in April, I was featured in Kimber Booth's book. It's titled Farmfluencers, the inspiring stories of pharmacy entrepreneurs. There's a link to that Farmfluencers book in the show notes. She just had me include my picture. She interviewed me about all my different sources of income and, you know, what I do as an entrepreneur. It was very, I felt like business focused. Great conversation. And I, it's my first book feature. What can I say? I'm flattered. <laughs> Anyways, congratulations to Kimber on publishing that book. That was her second book in a year. That's amazing. I will have a link to Farmfluencers in the show notes. Moving on, this spring I learned a lot about podcast show notes from the Podcast Show Notes Summit. Thank you, Steve Stewart. You put that together. That was amazing. I've told a couple of people this already, but I just want to share it real quick on my podcast. I would love to create a service for writing show notes for other podcasts. I have been interested in medical writing for a while. (laughs) I know that podcast show notes are not exactly medical writing, but you could argue that I could make podcast show notes for healthcare-based podcasts. So I am interested in doing that. That's why I, I bought a ticket, basically, to the Podcast Show Notes Summit, and I learned a lot about creating podcast show notes. Now, one of the biggest things that I learned was about using artificial intelligence to transcribe audio files. The name of one of those products is otter.ai. Otter.ai. There's a link to that in the show notes. Now, what I can do is I can take one of my MP3 files, my audio files, and put it through Otter, and I get a transcription. It's not 100% accurate, but it's at least 80%. And what does that do for me? Well, when I am editing a podcast, I can just focus on removing dead air, sidebar conversations, 
pre-interview banter, post-interview banter, things like that. And then I can write the show notes afterwards. I don't constantly have to be stopping the recording, writing down a note, and then restarting it. I can just take notes kind of uh, halfway (laughs) while I'm listening and editing the audio. And then the show notes just, they take me half the time, to be honest. And that was worth the price of admission. Very useful. There's a link to the podcast show notes summit in my show notes. This spring, I also became a peer reviewer for pharmacy journal manuscript submissions. Boy, that's a mouthful. All right. Now, the only one that I've worked for so far is the Journal of Pharmacy Technology. I've only done one article. I liked it, and I'd like to do more. That wraps up what I've done. Now let's talk about what I'm doing now. It's summer, or at least for me. I know the calendar doesn't say so, but it's summer for me. My kids are home, basically, from school for the summer, and I am in what I call student mode right now. I'm in student mode. I don't have time for many voiceover projects right now because I've got kids' stuff going on this summer. Uh, So I'm not taking any new clients until the end of August, but if you do have a project in mind and you're listening to this, feel free to contact me. Go to thepharmacistvoice.com, hit the contact tab, and leave me a message. Uh, But otherwise, I'm not producing much this summer until probably late August. If I'm not taking on voiceover projects this summer, what am I doing? You're probably wondering. Well, I'm taking an online course. I'm developing an online course in addition to the one that I already have at kimnewlove.com, and I'm creating a new service for my business. Let's dive into that. Which course am I taking? I am taking Tim Tippett's Audition Ready Online Course. If you're in voiceover, you'll know that Tim Tippett's is a famous audio engineer. So what am I doing? Why am I taking this course? I need to sharpen my audio engineering skills. Why do I need to do that? Great question. (laughs) It always pays to sound your best when you're auditioning. And I really feel like I need to uh, sharpen my axe right now. That's what I'm doing. I'm sharpening my axe this summer. Have you ever heard that quote by Abraham Lincoln, by the way? Give me six hours to chop down a tree and I'll spend the first four sharpening the axe. So that's what I'm doing. (laughs) I'm taking some time this summer to sharpen my axe. I'll be back to auditioning a lot more aggressively in the fall, after Labor Day. Now, speaking of sharpening my axe, I am updating some tools and buying some new tools. That's another way I guess you could say I'm sharpening my axe. For example, what kind of tools am I updating? I am updating Zoom. (laughs) Everybody has Zoom these days. I've been using Zoom for four years. I've had to use it for, um, for voiceover training, basically. And I have been getting away with the free version for four, four years. Okay. Four years. But this year, this, just this spring, I finally upgraded to the pro version and it costs me money. It hurts a little bit, but I really rely on Zoom and it was worth the money. What are some of these new tools that I'm trying or buying? First of all, I'm trying the free version of Calendly. It's an online calendar link. I only have one link now, just one link, and I love it. I plan to upgrade to the paid version later this summer. I just don't have time to deal with it right now, but I do love it. And what else am I up to? I'm in the middle of updating the podcast tab on my website. I'm updating it to something called a pod page. When you go to thepharmacistvoice.com and click on the podcast tab to find all of my podcast episodes, right now it's still the old version. I built that myself, and it looks pretty darn good, okay? Voiceactorwebsites.com built the I guess you could say the template, and I just fill in each podcast episode. What I am doing is building a pod page. If you go to podpage.com, you can see what I'm talking about. Basically, I'm making a website that's a lot easier for me to maintain (laughs) and a lot less mm, content burden on my website. So right now, my web host is telling me that all the images, blog posts, 
players, um, audio players that are under the podcast tab for my pharmacistvoice.com website are causing my site to be slow and they're taking a long time to upload. I had no idea (laughs) because of the way cash and cookies and all that work on a computer, it doesn't take that long on my computer. But for a first-time visitor, I don't want any frustration of all of that slowness of loading, especially when somebody is shopping for a voice actor for a medical narration gig. I want everything to be fast. So what I did was I bought into the pro version of PodPage. And in order to use that PodPage, I thought the best way to do things was to buy a new domain just for my podcast to live on. $12. Ooh, breaking the bank here. (laughs) Anyways, once I finish setting up my pod page, I'm going to point the podcast tab on the pharmacistvoice.com to it. The new domain that I'm using just exclusively for my podcast is the pharmacistvoicepodcast.com. You won't ever need to know that though, because you just go to the pharmacistvoice.com and click on the podcast tab. It'll take you right there. Um, It is running. It is up and running though. The pharmacistvoicepodcast.com. If you want to just get a sneak peek, I just haven't finished customizing all my settings yet. Feel free to visit look at its awesomeness. (laughs) Let me know what you think if you feel like it. All right, moving on. I'm also developing my next online course. If you didn't know, I do have an online course. You can find it at thepharmacistvoice.com and click on the store tab, or you can go to kimnewlove.com. The name of the course that I have right now is Pronounce Drug Names Like a Pro. The next course does not have a name yet. It's probably going to be called Under the Hood of Kim New Love's Podcast because that's what it is. In August, I'm going to be launching a mini course. It will take you less than two hours to go through, and it's basically a look under the hood of my podcast. What are all the ingredients for making a podcast? How do you do it? How long does it take? That is what the course is all about. I'm not teaching audio engineering in this course or anything. I'm literally going to show you all the ingredients that are in my podcast and how I put them together so that I can publish a show every week. I'll just leave it at that for now. Also in this spring update, I want to make sure I mention that I'm going to be starting a new service. This is not necessarily me announcing the service, but um, anyways, let me just start by saying, does anybody need a mic check? That's what the service is all about. I'm creating a mic check service for my business. And this is not a main hustle at all. This is just something that people keep coming to me for, and I appreciate you. But at this point, I've done it so many times for free that it's a thing. I need to start charging for it. So what I've decided to do is $25 for 15 minutes via Zoom. It's 50 bucks if you want the the session recorded and the file dropboxed to you. Then you can see what we were doing, and you will also get the audio files in that so you can hear what you sound like with your mic. Now, if it only takes us 10 minutes to set up your microphone, I'll help you with something else like mic positioning or mic technique, and we can fill up the other five minutes with stuff like that, or you can ask me questions. Now, if you need advice on which microphone to buy for podcasting, podcasting, or online meetings, we can also meet about that. Um, I really appreciate, again, all of the people who have contacted me, but I do understand your pain points at this point, and I understand how much time it takes me to do a mic check. I've been giving away a lot of time, and I, again, I appreciate people coming to me and trusting me with this. But I'm at the point where I just need to charge for that service. I need to charge for my time. I like doing mic checks, and I'm good at doing mic checks. So if you need a mic check, just contact me through thepharmacistvoice.com. Click on the Contact tab there and leave me a message, written or a voicemail, and I'll get back to you. I really don't want to start doing this until after Labor Day, but if you need something in June, July, or August, just fill out the contact form and we'll work something out. All right, that concludes what am I doing now? What's next for my business? I've got three things that I want to mention. 
Number one, I need to update my LinkedIn profile. Iqbal Acha gave me some fantastic ideas, and I need to take more action on them. Some of them I have, but I would like to take action on the rest of them. They're so good. I also need to update my resume. That's the second thing. A medical writer interested in hiring me for some work asked for my resume, and I didn't have an updated one. So, Monica, if you're listening, I'm working on it. (laughs) And third, And finally, my business phone line rarely rings. People contact me through the internet and we end up talking on my cell phone or via Zoom. So I'm getting rid of my business phone number in June. 1-855-RX-VOICE has been my vanity phone number since 2018, I think. Since 2018. It's time to get rid of it. I'm just using my cell. It just makes sense. I need to save some money. I need to pay for my new tools, right? (laughs) All right, that's what's next. What's in my way? All right. For my business, summer's in my way. I love summer. I love spending time with my kids. I work part-time. That's always been what I planned to do. So summer's in my way just because you know, of choices, life choices. I chose to do this and I'm going to have a great summer. It's my last summer with my younger son before he goes off to college. Actually, it's the second to the last summer because he's a junior entering his senior year. Number two, my kids are home. That's in my way. They come in and out. I cannot hide in my recording space and record podcasts or voiceover projects or audiobooks when my kids are in and out of the house all day for summer school and other activities. Number three, I have too many opportunities and not enough time. That's in my way. Don't we all? We all have so many opportunities. And number four, sleep. Man, it's too bad I have to sleep. I'll tell you. (laughs) I love what I do so much that I would keep working if I didn't need sleep. (laughs) That's a good sign. I love what I do. But anyways, sleep is in my way. That's all I've got for my update on my business. Next, I want to tell you what's going on with my podcast, the Pharmacist's Voice podcast. First of all, I'm feeling pretty organized. (laughs) That's a good feeling to have. My podcast production schedule is almost 100% full for the, the whole entire year of 2022, and it's only May. That's amazing. I just want to say thank you to all my past and future guests for putting up with me, asking you so far in advance to get on my schedule. I'm just excited about what's coming up. And thank you, my listeners, for listening. There's some great stuff headed your way. As you already know, I just finished up the Pharmacist Mom series with my Aunt Janet Titkmeyer there on May 27th. The Pharmacist Dad series kicks off on June 3rd with Tim Ulbrich. I've also got Tony Guerra, Mike Kelzer, and Iqbal Acha scheduled to be on the podcast in June. I actually already recorded all of them. I just have to finish editing and publish them each Friday in June. What else is coming up on the podcast? I'm going to continue publishing pronunciation episodes once a month. I was always trying to get them on the first Friday of the month, but with all these series that I'm running, I just kind of stick them in when I can. So coming up is Dr. Lainey Alexander. On TikTok, she's the CEO of Hard Drug Names. She picked the drug of the month for the month of June. So you'll hear her coming up here in June. I'm also going to continue publishing my quarterly updates. The next time you'll hear an update will be in August. I basically do one episode a season. So I'll do one in August, one in November, one in February, and then another one in next May. I'm trying to mention all this stuff in chronological order. So next I'll tell you that in July, I'm publishing a three-part series featuring women pharmacists in the beauty space. There are three guests for that, of course. The first one is Dr. Dimple Gandhi. The next is Dr. Leslie Hodge, and wrapping it up will be Dr. Danielle Peridin. And after that series, if all goes well, my brand photographer and makeup artist, they're two different people, Josh and Christina, will be on the podcast the last Friday in July to talk about best practices for headshot photos. I'm just about done with my update on what's going on with the Pharmacist Voice podcast, so I will talk about August, and then we're going to wrap it up here. 
In August, I'm publishing a back-to-school series, and I'm actually really excited about this because I'm going to be announcing a little bit more about my new online course. I have 14 slots available for the back-to-school series, and all of them are filled. I just need to confirm dates to record. So 14 episodes coming up in August. I know it's a lot, but they're going to be short, like 20 minutes or less, and right to the point. What is your course? Where can we find it? Who's it for? How much does it cost? Things like that. I'm going to stop there because when I do my summer update in August, I can talk about the fall lineup and, you know, I guess the whole entire rest of 2022 then. Let's move on to family news. In my private life, there's so much that I could talk about, but I do want to say that I dropped off my expired and unwanted prescription and OTC medications at a drug take-back day April 30th. I had not done that for two years. Pandemic. Thanks, pandemic. (laughs) There were students from the University of Toledo there. I just want to give a shout out to all those guys. Awesome job. I love seeing student volunteers. So proud of my alma mater. I hadn't cleaned out my medicine cabinet since the beginning of the pandemic, and it felt good to clean house. Now, if I neglected my medicine cabinet for two years, Just imagine what your patients need to do. Remember to remind people to clean out their expired and unwanted medications regularly. All right, what else have I been up to? I am a swimmer, and I was not swimming much during the pandemic. And the pandemic's still going on. I know, I get it. But I went ahead and started back swimming three days a week again anyways. Even though we're still in the pandemic, I feel safe enough to do that. Now, I got right into the groove of doing three days a week again, just in time to go on vacation and mess up my schedule. (laughs) I know how to plan, don't I? Now that I see my swim family all the time again, I'm working on organizing a swimmer's night out in June. We're going to have a pool party and potluck. Last thing that I'm going to mention about my private life, in July, I'm also going to be having family pictures, and I'm still working on organizing everybody's schedules for that. We don't have a date picked out yet, but I'm hoping to do it sometime in July. There's a lot going on in my personal life. I think I'll just end it there. (laughs) All right, let's talk about my husband just real brief. I want to give you an update on him. I have talked about him on my podcast throughout the years. He worked for a company for more than 12 and a half years, lost his job in the end of April, beginning of May 2020, right as the pandemic was really heating up. He started working for Amazon as an operations manager. That ended in December 2021, so about six months ago, and that was by choice. He got recruited to work for another company, and I won't say the name of it, but it is not Amazon, and he's been working at this new place for almost six months now. He likes it, and it's a good fit for his skills. And more than that, it's a good fit for our family. The hours are good. We can go to church on Sundays again. It's all good. We, as a family, like it. In other news, my husband lost 30 pounds since last August, and he's kept it off. I just want to say, congratulations, honey. I know you don't listen to my podcast, but congratulations. I think that's pretty awesome. And he, too, like me, started going back to the gym regularly. Thank you, COVID, for screwing us up for two years, but he's back on track. And one last thing about my husband, he loves the NFL. (laughs) I don't know how else to say it. He loves the NFL draft. He loves fantasy football. He loves NFL on Twitter. I love you, honey, but your podcasts and your magazines and your fantasy football drafts and everything. Oh, my goodness. I'm so glad I get a break for six months from them. But he is looking forward to fantasy football season, which to me kind of starts in August. And he has drafts all Labor Day weekend long. And he loves it. So that's what's up with my husband. Moving on to our son, Craig. Craig is 19, and he has autism. He loves to do whatever we're doing. (laughs) He loves to hike, bike, and read books. We like to do that too, right? He is going to love what we have planned for vacation. He should have graduated this May, but we're going into extra innings here because he needs to develop job skills. We need to figure out if he can work when he leaves school. In Ohio, you can stay in school until the age of 22, so we're going to do that. And the biggest thing that he's working on right now is exploring job skills. What can he do? Let's think ability first. 
We're trying to figure out all this stuff. And this summer, he's going to a farm, basically, to work uh, during summer school. He's going to work on farm skills. But he's also worked in a coffee shop and uh, a charity that specializes in socks. Let's just say that. (laughs) I'm drawing a blank about other things, but... The important thing is that we have a lot of purpose. We have a goal of getting him ready either to work or to transition to adulthood and whatever that would mean. One thing I can say about Craig is that he is pretty easy to please. He likes doing whatever we're doing. Hiking, biking, reading books, going for a ride in the car, running errands. Yeah, this summer, I'm sure we'll keep him busy. He'll go to summer school. He'll swim in the community swimming pool. And he'll do all kinds of other summer things, like eating ice cream, going to farmer's markets, and visiting family. It's going to be great. Now let's move on to Derek, my younger son. He's 17. I have so much to say about this kid, but it's because he's at a really, really exciting part of his life. Derek just finished his junior year. Finals are over. He is done. And I cannot believe that my kid took AP Calculus and AP Physics as a junior and passed. Who is this kid? (laughs) He is a smart cookie. Surely he gets it from his dad. Couldn't be me, right? (laughs) I'm into chemistry. Anyways, we went on two college visits. This is so exciting. I'll tell you, if you're a parent of teenagers or little kids, it gets kind of exciting around the junior year because they really grow up. He went to the University of Toledo April 14th on a college visit. We went with him. That is where my husband and I both attended college. That was so cool coming back with one of our kids. That was so cool. And then we went to the University of Cincinnati on May 2nd. What does Derek want to do? He wants to go through some sort of an engineering program. We think civil because he wants to become a construction manager. Will that be what he actually does? Time will tell. All right, what else do you do when you're in high school? You take the SAT and the ACT. He totally messed up and missed the ACT. I think it was April 2nd. I talked about it on my recap episode for the Ohio Pharmacists Association annual meeting. I think that was episode 143. And I talked about him. He just slept in. Oops, he missed it. I wasn't home to remind him. I I did remind him, but from a distance. (laughs) My husband didn't set his alarm, so he missed it. Now he's going to take it June 11th. He took the SAT April 13th. The ACT is going to be June 11th. It'll all work out. It's fine. What else has he done this spring? He went to prom. He wore a tux. I took pictures of him and his date, Sydney. They've been together since last fall. It was cool. And what else? He had an art show at his high school. He showed me all of his art projects. I'm so proud. He did so good. He just finished track season. He got his letter. He earned his letter again, his athletic letter. And he was second in the league for discus. Amazing. He was eighth in the district for discus, but he did not advance to regionals. I think he did pretty darn good. I'm proud of him. Kids need summer jobs during the summer to keep them out of trouble. What is Derek doing? He's working as a baseball umpire. He's been doing that since I think he was 14. It might have been 13. Anyways, he loves baseball. He loves umpiring. And I got to say, he's got a good eye for it. I mentioned the athletic letter that he earned. We still need to shop for a varsity jacket. We looked over spring break. He wasn't really sure what he wanted on it. Yes, varsity jackets or letter jackets are still a thing. We need to shop for one this summer so he'll be all ready for his senior year in August. And what else? Uh, Let's see. This summer, Derek also needs to do some of those college prep things like making his activities resume and writing his college entrance essays. I've been nudging him to start the those things, but uh, we need to get serious about it this summer here. And I've also been nudging him to start a podcast so he has an excuse to talk to people who do what he thinks he wants to do someday. Wouldn't that be awesome? It would be. And uh, I know this lady who knows how to start a podcast. (laughs) I could totally help him. We'll see what happens. More on that in August. I'll do an update on that. Now for my favorite part of these seasonal updates, what am I listening to, reading, watching, and playing? First, let's talk about what I'm listening to. I recently finished Baby Steps Millionaires by Dave Ramsey. It was a short one, less than five hours. 
Now I'm listening to The Tombstone Express by Steve Edwards. He's actually a videographer that I've worked with uh, via distance. He lives in Japan, and uh, that's a medium book. It's about eight hours long. It's about motorcycles. If you've ever listened to my podcast before, you know that I love motorcycles. It's a good book. I'm enjoying it. Next, I'd like to listen to The 5 a.m. Club, Own Your Morning, Elevate Your Life. It's by Robin Sharma. It is a long book. It's 11 hours long. It was recommended to me by Dr. Ijama Ikacha. She was my guest on episode 149, Pharmacist Mom Series Part 1. Now, if you didn't catch that episode, I admitted something in there. I made a confession. I have a binder filled with printed pages from Amazon.com of books that I want to read or listen to. Since it's summer, the 5 a.m. club book sounds like a winner. Okay, it's light out earlier here in Ohio, and I feel like getting up at 5 a.m. So let's read this book. I will probably actually go for walks and listen to the 5 a.m. club. So anyways, as far as what I'm listening to, that's all I've got. What am I reading? What am I reading? Recently, I read an amazing science fiction book. It's called Project Hail Mary. Actually, Craig and I, we read it together. Project Hail Mary, it's by Andy Weir. If the name sounds familiar, it's because he wrote The Martian. It's both a book and a movie. I think Matt Damon was in that. Yeah, Matt Damon was in that. I can't wait for the movie version of Project Hail Mary. Now I'm reading The Rosie Effect by Graham Simpson. Craig and I are reading that together, actually, and I am enjoying it. On my own, I'm still reading Beyond Powerful Radio by Valerie Geller. I go between the printed book and the audiobook. It reads like a textbook, so honestly, I'm having a hard time finishing it. I'm just dragging my feet a little bit. It's kind of academic, but it's entertaining, good content. And also on my own, I'm reading Permission to Care by Dr. Corey Jenks. He autographed my version at the Ohio Pharmacists Association Annual Conference. That's pretty cool. Anyways, when I finish that, I plan to write a review for him. So, Corey, if you're listening to this, it's a great book. I love it. I'll write you a review. Oh, and why do I love it, by the way? Corey has a background in improv comedy. It's really different. And the way he combines improv and healthcare is brilliant. I highly recommend it, especially if you're in healthcare. I also recommend that you take an improv class. I've taken a couple, and they are so fun. All right, we're getting towards the end here. What am I watching? I'm watching 30 Rock with my husband. I think we're on season five out of seven. Anyways, it's a good show. It's funny. It's funny especially because a lot of the content is from over 10 years ago. I am so behind on watching TV. (laughs) Thank goodness we can stream stuff these days. We're also watching season 42 of Survivor. We're watching that as a family. We love Jeff Probst. I love that show. Survivor's been something I've watched for like 20 years. And fun fact, I tried out for Survivor in I think it was 2003 or 2004. It was a long time ago. And I think my yellow lab, Chewy, who's since passed, was in my audition video. Chewy was in my audition video. God bless Chewy. If I ever find that, I need to post it on YouTube. I'm sure that would be funny. The last movie we watched was The Mule featuring Clint Eastwood. It was about drug trafficking. If you haven't seen it, you might like it. I liked it. I love Saturday Night Live reruns. We're watching a lot of those lately. And we've also found or stumbled upon something new, Holderness videos. Kim and Penn Holderness, or the Holderness family, have these videos on YouTube. you got to check them out. They're so funny to watch. They're two middle-aged parents with two kids in North Carolina. And spoiler alert, they won the Amazing Race this year. We watched the whole season, and we loved it. We had no idea they were going to be on. We were so surprised to see them. Anyways, we love their goofy YouTube videos about everything from being tired and going to bed early to busting craft myths. Um, Yes, craft myths. There are some out there. (laughs) You see it on Pinterest. People make it look easy, and they go ahead and bust those craft myths. I know it probably doesn't sound like it's for everybody, but I love them. Their song parodies are one of my favorite things. I'll put a link to their parody of Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire in the show notes. It is so funny. The Holderness version is called This Year is a Dumpster Fire. 
It was from 2020. (laughs) It's so funny. They also wrote a book called Everybody Fights, So Why Not Get Better At It? I loved it. My husband and I both listened to it, um, the audiobook version, of course, and it was a medium-length book, only about seven hours. They narrated it themselves, and I loved that. Coming up, my husband and I need to re-watch the original Top Gun movie because Top Gun Maverick, starring Tom Cruise, is the number one movie that I want to watch this summer. I need a date night so bad so we can go see it. All right, and finally, what am I playing right now? What have I been playing this spring? Honestly, we haven't been playing too many board games lately. I can name three. Settlers of Catan, the original board game. Photosynthesis, which I think we got for Christmas. And I've been playing all the Ticket to Ride maps on the iPad because I love them so much. (laughs) Just those three. We're definitely packing some games for our trip to Michigan, which I should be on as you listen to this. Speaking of the trip to Michigan, I need to wrap this up. This episode has become way longer than I expected. (laughs) I need to wrap up this spring update. I want to say thank you for joining me for episode 153 of the Pharmacist's Voice podcast. Please visit thepharmacistsvoice.com to read the show notes. Actually, since I let the cat out of the bag about my pod page, you can also go to thepharmacistsvoicepodcast.com to read the show notes too what's in the show notes today. There will be links to the board games that I mentioned, the Holderness Family YouTube channel, Perimenopause, the Savvy Sisters Guide to Hormone Harmony by Dr. Anna Garrett, Farm Fluencers by Dr. Kimber Booth, Permission to Care by Dr. Corey Jenks, my social media links, and more. If you know someone who would like this episode or needs to hear it, please share it with them. And subscribe to or follow the Pharmacist's Voice podcast on your favorite podcast player and YouTube to get each new episode right when it comes out. Join me on Friday, June 3rd for part one of my Pharmacist Dad series. It's an interview with Dr. Tim Ulbrich. Thank you again for listening. 